One of the most complex and critical technologies used in aircraft gas turbine engines is the turbine blade cooling technology. In this video we will understand why we need turbine blade cooling, what is the physics behind the cooling techniques, and how they are implemented by the engine manufacturers. In aircraft gas turbine engines, the turbines are the work producers. The first stage turbine immediately after the combustor is the high pressure turbine. The high pressure and high temperature gases from the combustor hits the high pressure turbine blades. The temperature of the gases from the combustor is about 400 to 600 Kelvin hotter than the melting point of the turbine blade material. This will surely melt the turbine blades. You will not be ready to fly in an aircraft whose turbine blades are melting, right? The turbine entry temperature should be high to have good engine efficiency, so we cannot reduce it and compromise efficiency. The only way to operate the turbine at these high temperatures is by cooling the turbine blades and by the proper choice of the materials. Over the years, due to extensive research, turbine blade cooling methods have been perfected. Now, the turbines can operate at 1400 to 1600 Celsius, which is much higher than the material's melting point. The heat transfer mechanisms which are used for turbine blade cooling are, convection cooling, film cooling, and impingement cooling. These three techniques are used together in the current engines. Consider a high-pressure turbine blade section, it will not be solid, but hollow with many internal passages machined in it. Let us understand the temperatures around a typical turbine blade. The extremely hot air from the combustor hits the turbine blade, and at the leading edge, the velocity of the air becomes zero, hence stagnation point temperature is reached, which is why the leading edge is extremely hot. After this, the air flows around and leaves the trailing edge of the blade. The trailing edge is the next hottest part of the blade, as it is thin, with less material to conduct away the heat. The air from the high-pressure compressor section is taken as bleed and is enters through the root of the turbine blades, and the internal passages machined inside. As this comparatively cooler air passes through the passages, convection cooling takes place. It is the forced convection cooling, which we experience when a cooler fluid is passed over a hotter body, like a plate and takes away the heat by forced convection. In these passages, internal sections are created to make the flow turbulent. As we know, turbulent flows will have higher heat transfer, hence higher cooling than the laminar flow. As the leading edges are very hot, the impingement cooling method is used, where the cooler air from the passages is passed through small internal holes, which hits the internal walls of the turbine leading edge. This impingement method has the highest cooling effect, hence used specially for the leading edges. After performing the convection cooling and the impingement cooling, the cooler air leaves the turbine blade, through the small holes drilled on the sides near the leading edge and the trailing edge. Remember, the air outside is not only hot, but also at high pressure. So, when the air comes out of the holes, it will be forced to flow over the surface of the blade. Now, the cooler air from inside forms a cover or film over the entire blade surface. This cooler air film protects the blade from the external extreme temperature continuously. This mechanism is called the film cooling. The air used for the cooling, as it passes through many passages, losses pressure and will not contribute for any thrust production. So, the amount of air used for cooling should also be effectively controlled and monitored, which is an extremely difficult task, but is made possible because of the control systems. The aircraft engine manufacturers like Rolls-Royce and GE use all of these cooling mechanisms. They also use thermal barrier coatings or TBC, which are coatings made of ceramics, on the turbine blades. This gives the blades more high temperature resistance. Because of all these methods, the turbine blades can operate even in the extreme environments and make us fly to our destinations.